come out to this beautiful lake with this temple on the edge of it we woke up ridiculously early at like 4 a.m rode out here took a long time the sun's up and everything already i'm going to show you a couple tips and hacks and tricks on how to shoot better portrait photography and photography of people but one of the first things you want to think about when shooting portrait photography and photos of people is your focal length and what lens you might want to use there's a few lenses that kind of work the best generally if you want to shoot people you want to shoot somewhere between like 35 millimeters and 85 millimeters seem to be the best and the most flattering for the model's face if you have ever seen an image shot on a really wide lens like something like a 16 millimeter or even a 10 millimeter lens it creates some crazy distortion on the face and it really doesn't look very good you'll notice like in this shot here at 16 millimeters it creates distortion on the face and it doesn't look very nice at all and here you can see punched in a little bit more to like 35 millimeters this is starting to look pretty cool and then here's the same shot at 50 millimeters and here's the same one all the way zoomed into 85 millimeters so you can see it changes the image quite a lot it compresses the whole image and the face shortens and gets a bit flatter one of the biggest other differences that you'll notice about the different focal lengths is the compression in the background so if you look at the really wide ones notice how far away the background seems and how much more of the background you can see and as you punch in notice how the background compresses and seems like it's closer and it's having the same effect on her face and that's kind of what makes the image look flat once it gets too zoomed in if you want to do a shot that includes more of the background maybe it's a good idea to stay on a lens that's a little bit wider something like a 35 millimeter and if you want to compress the background and maybe exclude something ugly in the background you can punch in to go all the way up to that 105 millimeter. The next thing we're gonna talk about is lighting. So lighting is super important for portrait photography and all photography. And it's important to know what kind of light you're shooting in so that you can change things accordingly. So right now it's pretty early, but it's not too early. The, the light is still very, very soft. Um, we're still getting a bit of that like golden light, but the sun is high enough that it's starting to create some harsh light on the face. You can even see in this image, it's quite harsh. And this side, the shadows are looking quite harsh and quite hectic. You're getting weird stuff around the eyes and the nose. It's really important to know what light you're working with so you can change accordingly. So when the light's super harsh, you might want to try to find shadows to shoot in the shadows. If the light's a little bit low, you might be getting that really golden light and you could shoot with the golden light hitting onto the subject's face. Whatever it is, just make sure you're aware of what it is and change things accordingly to make sure that you're utilizing the light that you have in the best possible way that you can. So we've come out to the next spot, which is this crazy abandoned hotel thing, like in the middle of nowhere. Really cool spot, so much interesting stuff going on. And you gotta like, as soon as you get here, you gotta bribe your way in. So you just give the security guard like 50,000 rupee, which is like $3 or something. Pretty cool, a really interesting place. The next tip that we're going to talk about is to not always shoot super shallow on your lens. Don't always shoot as shallow as it gets. So if your lens goes down to 1.4, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should always be shooting at 1.4. Um, like fully, I totally get that 1.4 sometimes looks really amazing and that really shallow blown out background looks epic and makes your subject pop. But sometimes in certain situations, you don't always necessarily want to have the background that blurred out. So for example, if you wanted to shoot your subject with a really cool view in the background, 
maybe you want to put your f-stops up to something like 4 or even as high as 5.6 and get some of that background more in focus and show off some of that beauty if you're in like a really beautiful scene. Another situation where you might not want to be using your lowest f-stop is if your subject is moving around a lot. So if your subject's going back and forth towards the lens quite a lot, sometimes the autofocus might struggle to track your subject and when it's that shallow of a depth of field, your images might not be as sharp as they could be. Something like putting your focus down to f2.8 or something like that will mean that your subject will be more in focus and sharper. Something I've noticed shooting all the way open at something like 1.4, even though if you've locked focus on your subject's eye, you sometimes get this weird look where like the eye is completely in focus, but then something even as close as the nose is almost out of focus because of how shallow that depth of field is. So I totally get it, use it a lot of the time, it's really cool and it makes it pop but sometimes don't do it. Something else that I've noticed is really cool about not always shooting shallow is when you have a batch of photos or even something like on your Instagram feed where they're all laid out next to each other, sometimes having some that aren't super shallow will add like diversity to your feed and then the ones that are shallow and the more close up ones or something with a really blown out background like pop way more than if they all just super blown up background. When it's overdone in every single image and they're all laid together, it doesn't have as much of an effect than if it was just some and when you do it when it actually has a purpose. This is our final location. Uh, it's a really cool waterfall. We're gonna get a couple more portraits of Hannah. The actual waterfall part is looking like it's really busy and there's so many people there. So we might not shoot that much of the actual waterfall. We're gonna shoot around it. But I got a couple more cool tips for you guys. So let's get into it. The next thing that we're going to talk about is posing the model to best convey the message that you're trying to tell in your photo. You can do a couple different things and something to think about is to get the model or the subject in a certain pose and position that's quite flattering to them. So you can do simple adjustments like staggering your legs instead of having them both together. By doing small things like that you can really make the subject look way better. If you do something like showing a vulnerable part of your body, like opening your wrists up to a camera, it gives the image a much more like soft, vulnerable feeling. Whereas if you did something like with crossed arms, it's going to make the subject feel more like isolated and closed off to the camera. See how you can move the model around in different ways to just show a little bit of difference and further convey the story that you're trying to tell in your image. The next thing to think about when taking portraits is the eyes. The eyes are such an important part of taking portraits and in the same way as the pose can completely change the vibe and the story of the image, the eyes can do just the same thing as that. If your subject is looking off of camera and the eyes aren't focused on the lens, that can give the image much more of a candid feel, whereas if you're looking right at the lens, it looks more posed and it also has much more of an intense vibe. It completely changes the image with something as simple as that. Another thing to think about with the eyes is if someone is looking down like this, it could give much more of a closed off and content type of feeling. Whereas if someone's looking out or up into the space, it's more of like a curious and open type of feeling when someone is doing something like this as opposed to something looking straight down. So that can also make a huge difference. The eyes are such a small part, but probably the single most effective thing in your portrait. So think about it and use the eyes wisely next time you're shooting portraits. That is all for this one. I hope you guys found some of these tips useful and maybe learned some new things about shooting portraits and photos of people. Give some of these things a try the next time you're out on a shoot mission. I hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.